Hello everyone, it's Tracy here with another video. Today I'm going to be making a shaker card. I'm starting with a piece of Tim Holtz watercolor cardstock and my Peerless watercolors. So you can see that I have them organized into this little um, three ring binder with some page protectors. And then I labeled each of the colors just so that I didn't get them mixed up. So I'm just going through and taking out each of the colors that I want. I'm doing a rainbow, so I have red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple. You can see the colors that I have there. So I'm just going ahead and lining them up in order so that when I apply them to my watercolor card stack, it's just easier um, since some of the colors are a little bit hard to tell. So I have a acrylic block and I'm just spritzing a little bit of water. You can just use a cup of water. And I have my paintbrush. So I'm going to start with the red, which is Scarlet Lake. And I'm just putting a little bit of water and then touching my paintbrush on to the Peerless watercolor card. And then I'm just adding more water as I go just to kind of let it bleed and blend out because I don't want such a saturated color. So then I'm moving on to the orange, and the color orange that I used was chrome orange. And you can see I'm just kind of working in a diagonal. Um, I just kind of started to do it, but the red was a little bit more of, took up more space than the other colors, which was totally fine with me. The yellow that I'm using is the amber yellow. Now I got this package directly from the Peerless Watercolor website. Um, I'll link to that below, but they also do carry some of these at Simon Says Stamp. The green color that I used is called Grass Green. And then the blue is Cobalt Blue. And that is a really pretty blue color, I really like that one. And then I'm just adding a little bit more water just because you can see how the color kind of um, mixed in there. And then the purple that I'm using is called Amethyst. Now I think I have, I haven't used these very much, but I got the pack of 42 I believe there are. And I just like to store them in that little binder. I actually got it on clearance at Target. And then I got the page protectors from Joanne online. Um, it just kind of works for me, and I think it helps because then you don't get the colors mixed up or anything like that. So after that dried, I'm going to go ahead and use these Kohl's ABC's dies, dies from Lawn Fawn. So some of them were not broken apart yet, but to do that you just bend them back and forth and then they break apart. So I'm going to spell out thanks. So I'll go ahead and find all of those dies. And then I'm going to use this T-squared ruler just to line them all up. That way I know that they're all um, kind of at the same height or space on the card. Um, otherwise they like to move around and um, it's harder to get them straight. So after I get those lined up, I'm just going to take a really long piece of washi tape and tape them down onto my card stack. That way I can run it through my cuddle bug and then they're not going to move on me. You could also use another piece on the bottom of those if you want just to make sure that they really don't move. So I'll go ahead and run that right through my cuddle bug and die cut all of those letters. Now I'm using the negative space of the letters. I'm not actually going to use the letters themselves. But you can save those and then use them on another card. So you get kind of two cards for the price of one. So I'll go ahead and remove all of those letters out of there. And then, like I said, set those aside for another project because they do look really cool. You can actually see all of the colors and some of them have multi-colors on one letter. So now I'm going to create the shaker part of my card. So I'm taking a piece of clear acetate and I'd cut it just slightly smaller than my um, watercolor card stock. And I'm just actually going to adhere that with my ATG gun 
So I'll just run adhesive along each side of my acetate and then I can go ahead and press that into place on my cardstock. Alright, so now I'm going to create the back part of my shaker card. I'm using the Lawn Fawn Let's Polka 6x6 paper pad and I have this gray and white polka dotted piece of cardstock. And I'll cut that down to the exact same size as my watercolor cardstock. And then I'm going to go ahead and adhere down my 3D foam squares all along the um, edge of that gray polka dotted cardstock and this is going to create the shaker part of my card. You can also use the cheap um, craft foam from the craft store um, but I find just using these 3D foam scores works really well because they are super affordable and then they're already pre they have their adhesive on them already so you don't have to worry about any glue or anything like that. So I removed all of the um, paper backings and then I'm just going to dump in some of these sequins. These are flat multicolored sequins which I thought went really well with my colorful front of my card. So then I can go ahead and adhere down my watercolor piece right on top of that. Just make sure that it is lined up. I had to trim off a little excess because the you can see the polka dotted paper is kind of peeking out on top there. So now I'm going to go ahead and adhere that onto my white A2 size card base. But first I am going to adhere or tie a bow around that with my May Arts Natural Twine. So I'll go ahead and trim off a little piece of that and then I'm going to tape both ends onto the back of my um, shaker piece. I'll make sure they're lined up and I'll flip that over and then tape it on to the back again. And then I'm going to take another piece of my twine and then tie a bow around the front. And then after I get that to look like I want it, I can just go ahead and trim off the ends. Alright, so then I'll go ahead and adhere that shaker piece down to my card base. So I'm just going to put a little bit of adhesive with my ATG gun. And then center that right in the middle of the card base. Now I thought it just needed a little something extra so I'm going to take a Copic multi-liner and just create a faux stitched line along each edge of my shaker piece. Now all of the supplies I am using on this card will be linked below in case you're interested in checking any of them out. So you can see I kind of went past the um, shaker piece and created the lines all the way to the edges of my card base. And then that is my finished card for today. So hopefully you enjoyed this video and we'll give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And if you're not already a subscriber, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And I will see you guys back here next time. Bye!